So after acquiring all my gear, it was ready to get to work at Calvarian, and well, I was having a wonderful time defeating this bad boy over and over again, with the KC taking around 10 to 15 minutes depending on the RNG of my Warhammer, I didn't really mind. But it was a little bit later down the line when my fun would abruptly be stopped by Cassie. Oh yes, I only had mackerel on in my inventory and things were not looking good, and the inevitable happened. And all I could think to myself was, How rude. Been a stagecoach playing Beethoven. Whoa. Didn't think that it would work. Yeah. Now they coming out the woodwork. Whoa. Built up my own platform. Could say I'm in the woodwork. Made the song go viral. Probably off some footwork. But there's no reason crying over spoiled milk. I mean, listen, I'm not here for the status. I'm here for the low level combat void waker. Oh yes, but I do need some GP and resources to continue the grind. Now, um, I got my GP through Alking, but I need to get my resources via LMS. So, um, as a PVMer, not my strongest point. So, let's give it a run. Let's go, let's, let's go, let's go. Aye, people wanna hate every day, it's okay. I don't wanna waste, so I'll put them in their place. They gon' talk down on me, promise that I'm straight. Give them all a taste, every day, I know I'm great. People wanna hate every day, it's okay. I don't wanna waste, so I'll put them in their place. They gon' talk down on me, promise that I'm straight. Give them all a taste, every day, I know I'm great. Aye, people wanna hate every day, I'm feeling lit. I don't get phased, all I do is get rich. I can hear y'all when you talking that shit. Barking like a dog, you just sounding like a bitch. People talk down on the things that can't be looking at yourself and i'd rather be me i can understand why you're sleeping on your team life's so whack probably better in your dreams probably better in you fuck around and get this money up you may know my friends but promise that you ain't one of us spending all these bands by more than i drop a hundred bucks resting in my bed I won't lie, it was actually kind of fun, other than the 100 times I was told to sit rat. But anyway, I amassed my points and managed to get myself 126 restores and 75 man to raise. So I put my newfound resources to work and built up to 60kc at Calvarian, and obviously these kills taking like 10 minutes a pop, yeah, it was a massive time sink and I was very close to being put into an asylum. So I decided to get myself one more kill, and it was during this kill that I decided it's about time I get myself an upgrade. If I'm going to be here for the long run, I can't be doing it with this little rune warhammer. So I got to planning out my next route, and this is how it went. So after some true gamer research, I decided Dragon Warhammer. Mm-hmm. Beautiful stats and looks very cool, but then I was like, oh yeah, shamans and 1 in 5k? No thank you. What about the Tazar Mole? It's 7 tick attack speed and kind of rare. Yeah, I don't really fancy that either. But then, the Barrel Chest Anchor. Now this bad boy has some absolutely wonderful stats and also has the same attack speed as a Rune Warhammer. The only problem with this weapon though is it's locked behind the Great Brain Robbery, which has many, many prerequisites. Great. My journey starts off with this weird old man wanting me to dip some meat into a cauldron. I don't know, maybe he wants to veganize his meat so he doesn't feel so bad. Druidic ritual completed. I then spent five minutes searching this vine. I swear to god if this asshole tells me to go run around the jungle and find something else I'm gonna cut his- Yeah, that's what I thought too old man. Jungle potion completed. Oh yes, nothing suspicious about this boss arena looking- Arena, am I right? I'm sure absolutely nothing wild could happen. Oh holy shit, look at the size of this guy. Ah oh, yes, nothing a nice safe spot can't handle. I mean he did range me, but whatever. And that is the Shrek quest completed. And the peak of any RuneScape player's career, picking bananas. Don't you love clicking banana trees over and over again? Pretty sure I committed a crime here, like digging up his flowers and then slaughtered the man, but whatever, with this quest completed, we can now move on to stage two. And I need a lot of GP, so I spent the rest of my points at LMS on rune arrows and sold these bad boys five at a time. And with all my beautiful GP, it was time to start buying up planted bags, or bagged plants as I should have actually just said. Now you might be thinking, okay, what are you up to? I need to get myself 40 farming. Yes, and I don't know how to do it on an Iron Man, and to be honest, I'm not going to do it the normal way anyway. So I'm going to be buying bagged plants and combining two skills to do two birds, one stone. 
Okay, and after spending a lot of GP, I do have 500 bagged plants. But that's not the end of it. I need to buy all my watering cans and then manually start filling them up one by one, because that's the only way to do it. I don't know why that is. And so the grind begins, and what you're seeing here is a big brain at work, extra wrinkles on the side. I am basically getting both my construction and farming up at the same time, which I'm going to need both of these skills for in the future quests. Hey, finishing up on 32 farming, and now we can go get uh, a quest done for some more farming XP. I've never done this quest, nor do I know where the fuck I am, and I'm being attacked by lizards, and I'm now poisoned with no anti-poison and little food. So, um, yeah, I kind of had to evacuate and come back the next time with a lot more preparedness. Oh yes, and absolutely no trouble the second time round, mm-hmm, that's how you prepare, because failure to prepare is preparing to fail. The thing I love about clicking blue and all my quests is I literally have to pay no attention, making quests now some of the most easiest content in game. It's like stabilizers on steroids, you literally can't go wrong. And with the dirty garden completed, 10k XP for 36 farming. But as I said, I do need 40 farming, so I'm back to buying bloody dirt bags and, well, you know, the drill. We have to then fill up a bunch more watering cans. But that, ladies and gents, is 40 farming in the bag, as well as 36 construction. Ooh, I love it when things come together. This is where the real fun starts. 42 Slayer is what I need, and it's known for being notoriously slow. I ended up getting a task of shades from my boy Vanica, and I, I, I found out the hard way that they are not one defense friendly. So I went over to their older brother, thinking I would safe spot all of them, and after realizing they take a long time, I thought fuck that. I skipped it and decided to go to Turiel and ended up with some wolves, which were pretty chill in the end. Now my next task was spiders, and I decided to ask this young man where they may be because I'm lost, but he continued to ignore me. So I gave him the swift taste of my blade and interrupted his hunting and ha <laughs> ha love it. Yeah, that's right, flee you coward, don't you come back to my ends. I then continued to massacre all the tiny baby spiderlings only to amass a formation of angry mother spiders behind me and <laughs> terrifying indeed. Now if I'm to get lucky and I can do a bunch of wilderness tasks, I may actually amass some points, and to be honest, I was getting pretty lucky with them indeed, and I actually ended up finding myself with the finale being Hellhounds. 42 Slayer, and I left my task to be, because we need to move on. And next on the list is Prayer. I need 49 Prayer, and decided I would hop to a less populated world. I was logged out, and realised I had run out of membership. So I jumped onto the main account to trade myself over a bond, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's what any sane person does, right? And uh, some random person was here, and it looked kind of sketchy, so I decided to make the situation even more suspicious by randomly handing him 150k, and uh, yeah, I just sent him on his way, told him to a little hush-hush. Now, it's time to get back on with the prayer. And this was a lot more chill, not having to worry about PKs, because I had many bones banked. 49 prayer achieved, and um, I killed myself at the wines. This, this by the way, doesn't count as a PVM death. I'm PVM deathless. That was a suicide, big difference. And this is my first encounter with the big man. But during rum deal, I found out I could intimidate the zombies. Right, I don't know what that means, but I must have been saying something extremely deadly for this screen to pop up. And well, they actually leave you alone once you do this. And that's Rummius Dealus Completus. So the next task on the list was for me to go and get 50 smithing. Now I absolutely have no idea how I'm supposed to go about this, so I just looked up some smithing quests, and I've never ever done this quest. It's still left uncompleted on my main, and it's kind of funky actually, this whole foundry. But with the quest completed, I got myself some nice smithing XP, taking me up to 36 smithing. You should have done Elemental Workshop 2 when you done the first one, is all I can imagine you saying in the comments down below. And to be honest, you're probably right. Now I've seen that that's how everyone does it. But with some nice XP banked, that does take me up to 38 smithing. 
Next on the list was the Giant Dwarf, because I want to unlock the Blast Furnace, and for this quest you need a multitude of bars and ores. So I went ahead and manually mined everything that I needed, but it was during the quest, near the end, that I found out that if I don't have something, I can just hop and re-talk to him and you can literally just skip it until you get the ones that you already have. So. Yeah, I probably could have done it all with like one set of bars, but there we go, that is Dwarf completed. Then I had so much fun power mining iron all the way up to level 40 mining. I'm pretty sure they named this demon after some Italian ham, like Churizo or something like that, but I remember this quest when I was younger. I remember I really wanted the cooking gauntlets because they are good for cooking, and I wanted my first 99, and like most people, it was cooking. But the next time I came around to do this, it was actually very easy, so I grabbed my crest parts and made haste for Varrock. Then I stole this old man's gloves and straight to the capital of Scorpia to get myself them golden gauntlets. I then stumbled across this lonely person training agility. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was a bot, but they did reply, but they must really hate agility since this thing is like, what, 1k an hour? I actually forgot how fast Blast Furnace is, so that is a 50 smithing coming in very quickly and very nicely. And uh, we are ready to move on to the next skill. And well, the classic bit of glass blowing takes us up to 45 crafting, and now we're on to our final skill that we need before the last few quests. And <laughs> can you guess where I'm going next? And sitting here killing crabs for another hour of my life, we've achieved 40 ranged, which means every skill is now finished. Oh, but this roller coaster of fun just doesn't end, especially when you're in the middle of a quest that somehow gets bugged out and just doesn't want to continue. I'd loaded at this point maybe 30 cannonballs into this bad boy with absolutely no luck of progressing in the quest and no dialogue coming up. I continued to do so and uh, I thought maybe he said 30. You know, maybe it was 30 and I don't know, maybe I'm at 25. So I spoke to the man himself and he told me, three, I only need to fire three shots, which I'd already done. So I hopped to the other boat and I killed a pirate thinking maybe this will change up the system's code. And once I clapped his cheeks, I went for a quick swim and oh, god damn was I right. And I was able to actually continue with the quest. Oh yay. And with all of this hard grind coming to an end, we'd done the last quest. Well, the, the quest before the last quest, the, the pre-quest requisite. Look at this strong boy pulling a statue all by himself. Very well done. And then I scammed this stupid doofus Rufus for a bunch of non-moving wooden cats. <laughs> oh, what kind of asshole would fall for that? I don't know, but I uh, love it. I love how this boss has one of the coolest animation and intros to any boss fight there is, and you instantly run back like five tiles and sit in a safe spot for the entire fight. The, 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 literally, the whole fight. Just me and this guy fighting, well, kind of, just me killing him. And there it is, the massive anchor shrinking to size as if we were in cold water, but nonetheless easier for me to carry. And that's a big wrinkly brain beating the great brain. <laughs> oh, but then I got scammed by Smith to repair my anchor, which I don't even know how it broke in the first place. Back to depopulating the generations of sand crabs and 60 attack coming in. Oh my goodness, ah, oh, the grind. It has been such a grind. Just look at that bad boy. Oh my days, they even just look cool wielding it. Anyway, let's go give this bad boy a spin. And with all my blighted restores, I can permanently keep up my strength and attack prayers, just making this whole thing so much more chill. And as we can see, not that time, but the anchor does absolutely clock the cheeks of Calvarian. It's just a massive, oh my goodness, it's just such a huge upgrade. I absolutely love it. I tell you what, the, I mean, the absolute suffering I've gone through to get to the point of actually having this thing wielded and using it here was 150% worth it. And uh, I didn't even realize, but I'm going to be finishing off my Hellhound Slayer task here as well. <laughs> This thing is just so much faster, and with this anchor, we are now ready to camp out Calvarian. And ladies and gentlemen, I will see you with the next one. Feeling so tall, I could give a high five to the pilot. Yeah, family tight.